we go through a vigorous uh, uh, background in hiring uh, process. Uh, only 13 out of every 100 applicants ends up being a wiser employee. Uh, so we are hiring the most dependable and, and, uh, and most reliable. Um, and, you know, employees, when we go through this process, uh, employees tend to work out. 82% uh, of our employees have been with us for more than a year. A huge thing that makes us different uh, than our competitors in, uh, in hiring people uh, when we're all supposedly pulling from the, uh, the same labor pool is our, our uh, scientific uh, profile, our psychological profile. 24 years ago, uh, with industrial organizational psychologists, uh, we created something called Inner View, the Guard Performance and Placement Profiles. The first part of, uh, of the profile, uh, the first test, if you will, is should this person be a security officer? Uh, and, you know, we're looking for uh, certain things uh, in the applicant where they match up with other people that have been successful performance-wise and with low turnover risk. Uh, they've got a good, strong work ethic. They've got good customer service skills, which a lot of people have, uh, but not everyone matches up uh, like the typical um, uh, successful security officer. Now, the profile will eliminate bad people and it will eliminate good people that are not suited for a position of security. Bad people, you know, maybe liars, cheaters, malingerers, lazy people, uh, uh, con artists, you know, those type of people. Uh, it'll eliminate people that are that are accident prone. That are uh, it'll eliminate people that are prone to substance abuse. But it'll also eliminate good people that don't match up like the typical successful security officer. The second part of the profile uh, is the placement aspect, and this goes. Uh, this is part of our R for the right match. Uh, there are two elements that drive a performance and turnover in our business. So again, the first test is, should this person be a security officer? And then if they should, what do we do with them? There are two things that drive success. The first one is the amount of public contact on the job. Some positions, there's a lot of dealing with people, constant dealing with people. Other posts, a, a midnight watch in an isolated warehouse there could be no dealing with people. So on a scale of one to 10, if you will, on public contact, we have jobs where there's a lot of public contacts on the opposite end, very little public contact. Now, the second thing that drives performance and turnover is the amount of activity, the attention to detail required, how alert someone needs to be, the difficult of the duties, the activity level, also on a scale of, uh, of 1 to 10. Main gate of a chemical plant, constant activity. Again, that isolated warehouse, maybe an officer makes one round in an, in an eight-hour shift. When you put the two together, you end up with four different security officer posts and four different types of people. High public contact with low activity the greeter, low public contact with low activity, a graveyard, lots of activity with low public contact, we call the grinder. And then there's, there's high public contact with high activity or high attention to detail required is what we call the gratifier. 49% applicants and officers should not be assigned to a post where there's a lot of dealing with people and it's important or to a post where there's a great deal of activity or attention to detail required. If they're assigned to a job where there's high public contact and high activity or high attention to detail required, turnover goes up to 613 uh, percent, which explains why turnover is so high in our industry. Our profile gives us a, a crystal ball to whether someone will work out in terms of uh, performance and tenure. 
And so we've been doing this for 24 years, and we have uh, uh, the largest data. Uh, we, we have more data in the world than anybody else when it comes to uh, biographical data on security officers in the workplace combined with psychometrics linking that data to uh, how they performed uh, and uh, how long they worked uh, in, in that position. You can imagine uh, with uh, doing this for 24 years uh, and putting in the day that somebody came to work and the day that they left, we've got, we've got pretty good data on, uh, on evaluating turnover risk.